May you are God. <laughs> it's it's good you know, to be here. It's it's wonderful. It's it's a great privilege you know, to to be here again and preach the word of God. To preach God's word. So, una gits tanan, no may kumang opisinyo. What is the best and worst thing about being stuck at home for more than a month? What is the best and worst thing about being stuck at home for more than a month? I believe you will say, isa sa mga sabato siguro, relationships, right? Family, right? So, sa, sa piyaksang uncertainty nga nagkatabuk-subong, it's comforting nga ara ka sa imo family. Na upod mo imo pamilya. No, sa tiyon sa kagamo, sa tiyon sa uncertainty, upod mo imo pamilya. Na nagagalay na comfort kag, kag in a sense, security. And for me, siguro, ang worst, kung na muna sa ang best, to be away from my family for three months and to be away from you. No? So, mga utod, ang, ang family, ang relationship, is one of the best things, but at the same time, like, it's also worse, especially to some of you, na doon na gulpihan ang mga hala, doon ka budlay mga galit kung, kung sa Malawi ka tinigon, kita lang period of the night. Na doon naalad ka mo nga, doon naalad ka mo nga, kung may, may pattern, no? pwede ka mo kalaga, pwede ka mo kagwa, pero imagine, no? mas tangas inyo balay, galing is inyo balay, yung nga malawi, and sometimes, wow, nagkakadulaan, kagit pasensya, right? Ngayon mo, isang kabataan mo, ang inyong nga balay, playground, no? Gala, galibog ang ulo mo, kalapta, grabe yung lapta, and everything, nagkakadulaan, kagit sa pasensya. For example, sa akong pagpuli ko sa balay, ng June 9, kung pagpuli ko, Kahit nakibot ko kay Shana, si Shana dako na, kung nakakot siya po, kung bumat siya, no? Of course, I'm so happy, nakita ko na akong wife, pagdanay na kami. Pero after four days, no? First day, Shana, kita ko pa na, you're so cute! After four days, mukha cute din si Mo, ha? Ito pang matikidad, no? No? And then, sa wife ko naman, bago nga nga libro, hindi ka din nakita na naman. So, relationship is the best thing and sometimes it's it's worse because you know especially in 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 kun pala pala para na to ng context sa iba na mga families may grab nag nag create sang grabe nga conflict kag kun tawag nato sa balita bo nagtaas ang increase sang balita about abuse kag divorce maginala kun nga nagakatabon but anyway the reason why I, I, I ask you that question because COVID-19 and the lockdown and the existing restraining order nagpahayag sa aton of our great need to grow. Nakita niyo man ha? Ginipakita sa aton sa sininga difficult circumstances hindi lang sa aton, hindi sa bilunga kalibutan that even in that small place sa aton mabalay, there is still need for us to grow and to grow towards Christ-like maturity. I wonder if you recognize that need. Na palang ginatawa kita sa ginoon bilang katawahan niya na sa ligan pasabis kang good life. Ngayon ni tamahadlo, kundi ito bago tang future na may kaisog, na may courage, na may hope, because we know who God is, but we are fearful. Nag-doubt kita, nag-confuse kita, and we question nga agin ang brand sa ginoon. Iban sa ato na yan, wala ka man nahadlo, no? Pero, wala ka na, no? Pero ang problema mo, kaya nagsali kasi mo self, no? May financially secured ka, you have enough resources. Mga kuturan, hindi lang mo na. Pinatawag man sa ginoon to reflect the image of God in our family, but in our family, wow, wala na to na reflect ang image of God, in base na maging patient kita, naging impatient kita, in base na maging loving kita, wow, wala kita ka-exercise ng unconditional love, in base na mag-exercise kita self-control, wow, wala control na ito ng life, and in this lockdown, we develop a bond habit, nga in base na rin magtubo kita, nagpunol pag kita, ang responses na ito hindi maayo, na kulang tao na ito mga katuran, makita rin na ito, wow, kadaan mo pag itsang kalayuhon sa akong kabuhin. Right? And listen to me, it's not enough that you realize, that you personally realize, nga kinangalan ko magtubo. It is fundamentally important that you realize or you understand nga kinangalan ko magtubo 
Paano ko magtugo? Kag asta san ugit ko bala magtugo para sa kahimayaan sa Ginoo. John MacArthur, a faithful expositor of God's word, sila niya mga kautor. Churches are filled with people who are spiritually immature, undiscerning, weak, and fragile. This is a severe threat to the church. He said, frankly, it may be a sign that something is terribly wrong, for growth is one of the essential signs of life in both the physical and the spiritual realms. Where there is no growth, no true life exists. Where there is no spiritual growth, there is a good reason to question whether spiritual life exists. Now the question is, are you growing? If you are not, or if you are not satisfied with the rate of your growth, kay sinay mo ba, huwag bisa na magtubo po sa sinay nga na lockdown, I have much time to read the scriptures. I have much time to exercise my 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 gifts and my my at my qualities, my godly qualities. Pero nang puno nyo ka, ayan makarelate kaya kinsa kinang barko. Magroturan this message is for you. This sermon series is for you, so don't miss this sermon series. Oh, magkutun ta ka mo? Do you want to grow? I believe immediately you will say, Yes! Gusto na akong magtubo. Di ba? Pero, the next question is the hardest one. Are you willing to pursue and to make every effort to grow? Problema na kung isa mo eh. We want to grow, but we're not willing to pay the price to grow. Gusto ko, I want to be back in shape. Gusto ko mag- magamaya ko na Nagchan, pero hindi ka man, hindi ka man willing mabugtaw sa aga, ka maglagan, right? You want to be in shape, you want to be physically healthy, pero wala ka man pugong sa ginakawan mo, it's so hard, right? Pero mga utod, kung na-realize mong need mo, kabay patanik, you will pursue by God's grace to make every effort to grow towards Christ-like maturity. So as we start our sermon series this morning, the Apostle Peter a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, ang iyagid niya intention, ang iyagid niya aim, kag purpose, nga ang mga kristuhanon sa lamutong time, they will grow towards Christ-like maturity. So that is the what and the how of the book. No? Magtubos na towards Christ-like maturity, nga napasad sa Biblia. Okay? So, to grow towards Christ-like maturity that is rooted in the certainty of God's Word, ang pamangkot nga, ah, now, sa, sa pagbasa mo sa 2 Peter, iyan ba yan nga? And the big why is this? Because of the lies, because of the deception of the false teachers. Ang pamangkot, hasta saan mo kita magtubo, kami hiniputin sa Scripture, hasta magbalik si Kristo Jesus. So that is the aim of the Apostle Peter. You remember 1 Peter? Sa 1 first, sa first Peter, kung inyo madumduman, no, ang iyagin ng instruction, ang iyagin ng encouragement sa mga Kristuhanon, bang hindi ka mo maguntat, ang encouragement, salid ka mo sa Diyos. Trust God who will bring you gloriously through trials by living and proclaiming His gospel as exiles and priests in this world. Ang muna encouragement siya sa first letter niya, saligin niyo ang Diyos na aginambal na kung lang tao mo sa punta sa 1 Peter aginambal na stand firm in the true grace of God hindi ka mo mag give up padahin ka mo na aginambal na because the first letter we have a great persecution my persecution that is the main problem in the book my persecution outside gina persecute sila sa mga sa mga kalibutan gina, 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 gina persecute sila because they are followers of Jesus so, we exhort sila, stand firm ka mo sa grace of God. This is a sure hope no matter what. Stand firm ka mo, hindi ka mo mag-give up because Jesus Christ will restore you, establish you no matter what. Your future is secured forever in eternity. Pero kung magbasa ka naman 2 Peter, you will realize that the main issue is not persecution, but the main issue is deception. Amatihan niya to? So the main issue is deception ang pagpanginto sa mga manugpatalang na manugtudlo. 
May mga manug wale, may mga manug tudlo nga ila opisyo patalangon ang mga kaswanon. That is the main problem and this is serious because the, the deception is not coming from outside the church. The deception will, will come inside the church. False teachers will rise among us. No wonder the Apostle Peter made every effort to remind the church. Sabi, no? He is making every effort to remind the church na magtubo ka mo, na magtubo ka mo, na kinalansi na magtubo ka, maging rooted sa scriptures because amulang kita ang mga kuturan ang makaprevent sila, makaprotect sila na hindi sila may tuan. Kahit kung rooted ka sa scripture, you are my discernment ka, mabalaan mo nga hindi nga tao, ginadalaya ko sa hindi kamaturan, kahit palayo sa scripture. That's why kung magkato ka sa chapter 3 verse 6 or 16, makita mo, hindi nga manupata lang, gagamit man Bible, Pero ang problema, kay kagamit sa Bible, ila itwist ang scripture. Gamito nila sa ilang gusto, hindi kung anong ginambag sa Bible. So no wonder, grabe ang effort ni Apostle Pedro, biskan, palat yun na sa ginsulat ni Pedro, the Bible says here in chapter 1, verse uh, verse number, natawain nila sa verse number 14, sila yun, since I know that the putting of my body will be soon as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. So, si Pedro, palatsyo na, may take grabbing persecution at the time, sa time ni Nero, na according to tradition, si Apostle Pedro, ginlansang baliskad. Wala sa lang palansang kaangay kay Jesus, baliskad niya because according to tradition, the church history is not worthy to be crucified in the same position as his Lord. Pero amoy sa prediction ni Jesus, mapatay siya. No? He will die kag amoy sa pamaagi na mag-glorify si Jesus sa iya nga. Kabuhi. So, pinaka-amazing sa tanan ng gabi ng palatyon ka na, ara ka sa difficult times, but still, ang iya concern is the welfare, wel- welfare of the people of God. Ang iya concern ang kaimtangan sa church. So, palatyon ka na, grabe, no? pero ang balino ba gusto ko magtubo ka mo? I-remind ka mo sa tangbuhi ko. I will remind you of these things. Because if you are growing towards, if you are growing toward maturity, and if you are anchored in the Word of God, these false teachers cannot deceive you. You will be stable. So grab it, mga tura ng iyang effort. Grab it, iyang effort para magtubo ang iglesia, ang church. And you know what, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, that is my aim and purpose. Why I chose this book. I chose this book because of its importance, because of its important pastoral reminder for us to grow towards Christ-like maturity. This is indeed a, this is indeed a difficult time. Kaya hindi kasi nga kano nga kinanglan pag ibig maggrow ka kabut na yung nasa situation. mga kultura may nagpost sa Facebook na ano amazing kano kaya may arat kapayas nga nagtubok sa pader. Ma-miss ka na, nagtubok sa pader, katakilita mo, pero namunga. Kagambunga, yung pwerte pa katindas. Now what's my point? My point is, even in these difficult times, we can be fruitful. Don't say nga mapawala ka na lang, natutang difficult times man, na mapawala lang, excuse your life, ah, sarang lang mga ating bali, or bahilan na lang scripture reading. No! This is a time na hindi kita magbuya sa scripture. And I will show you today why na akin ang lahat na magtubo. So this is my purpose, my aim. My purpose, my aim as a pastor is connected to the purpose and aim of Apostle Peter. This is my prayer. Listen to this. This is the main idea of the whole book. Kaya sa sinigad lang, sinigaga na in this given time, I will preach the whole book. But don't worry. This is my prayer. This is the message of the book. It is my prayer that as a church, we will grow towards Christ-like maturity. That is firmly rooted in the certainty of God's word to guard us against the deception of the false teachers while waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Medyo labak na sentence, pero hindi sa budlay, eh, eh, ano, hindi sa budlay, recall. Ang muna niya sa, magtubo ka, napasad sa Biblia, para hindi ka matiplang sa mga manugpatalang, samtang nagulat kita kay Jesus. 
Okay? So every Sunday, I will remind you about that. Para hindi natin malipatan. I mean, size niya ni bro. There is also power in reading the Bible slowly and preaching the Bible slowly. So medyo may nahinay tanay ka dali. And our desire is to grow towards Christ-like maturity. So ato ini maguturan i-unpack, ato ini i-divide ang big sentence ini. So una get, look at your Bible. I want you to look at your Bible. Verses 1 through 11, chapter 1. Ano ang bagra mga utod? This, that is a long sentence, but listen to me, I will not give every details. Hindi ko pagkatagal talaga niya dikat, but I will give you big ideas. Sa sinay nga una, ganyan nga division, this is the what and the how of the book. Nalatawan niyo kung paano nagsugod mga kauturan. Ano ang bagra sa verse 1 and 2? Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. So kung nagdaw na ito, nang binang balagid servant sa mga apostle sa Jesus Christ. To those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. As you read this this week, ang knowledge na pinagiging sulit sa 2 Peter. Okay? Kagpulang taon na ito, mga maturan, sa una pa lang yung bukada, ginataga na ta, hint ni Apostol Pedro kung ano ang gusto yung matapok. Kay, kung lang ito ang punta, when you go to chapter 3, verse 18, ang bal ni Pedro, no? But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ginambal na naman ang knowledge. Kaya ginambal naman ang magtubo ka mo sa grace and in the knowledge. Na kung lang ito na ito mga uturan, ang grasya ka ng pangidahit sa Diyos, mag-multiply lang it as we grow in knowing Jesus Christ. So muna ang pagkilala kay Jesus, muna dapat untat. Ang pagkilala kay Jesus, wala dapat untat, sige-sige mga kautulan. Kaginang madri sa akin, nga ang ginsulatan ni Apostol Pedro, mga Kristuhan, yung nangadahan. If you are here today, and if you are not sure about your relationship with Jesus Christ, fundamentally, importante, kita mo na sa naisecure mo, ang relationship mo kay Jesus. Because kung wala ka relationship kay Jesus, you will not grow bisa na nung ating uha mo in a way that honors Him. But if you are a Christian, you have a relationship with Jesus, tandaan mo din. Kaya unang ibukada din, ginahampa ni Apostol Pedro sa akin, kung ano ang healthy na Christian life. Kag listen to this. Ang healthy na Christian is a growing Christian. Wala sang healthy na static na Christian. Mga utod, wala sang amuna. Kung healthy ka, nag-grow ka. Pero kung nag-apundo ka, baw may problema, bit na nag-apundo. Kagamuna sa gusto i anticipate ni Apostle Pedro. There is a danger of spiritual stagnation. Kamuna sa bilang na nagpunol ka. Nga ang nagpunol ang Christian, nagpunol ang Christian kung wala na sa nagpursu sa pagtubo. Kung ginbayaan niya na ang Bible, dugay na. Kung ginbayaan niya ng commitment niya sa church, dugay na. Ano matabusin mo? If you are not progressing, you will deteriorate. Hindi ka mag-expect na kung magpundo ka, matubo ka. Kung magpundo ka, makunol ka. Sino na lipay na magtanong sa isa ka, ka utang sa po talong? Sa gudun mong talong, bunyagan mo ito ng utang o fertilizer, malipay ka lang sa anong kabulan, may kajapon, may ginani. Hindi ka malipay. Ang goal mo lang tanong ka para maka, makapamunga kung ma-enjoy mo iya nga buka. Mga utod, Ang healthy nga Christian is a growing Christian. Kag dapat yan isipit na itong tandaan na ganit. There is a danger of spiritual stagnation. A danger of life without growth. Kag wala sang Christian nga static. Ang muna sang challenge ato sa sininga libro. So if you want to grow, you must understand this. Nga ang healthy nga Christian is a Christian nga nag-grow towards Christ-like maturity, kag ari ng Bali Pedro, it is centered in the person of Jesus Christ. Verse 1 and 2. Na sintro kay Jesus. Imagine, huwag yung tagahan sila sa status, a righteousness of Jesus, kinatag sila, positionally, they are perfect. Pero ang bal ni Apostol Pedro, i-practice ni nila in nga position. Hindi mo sila yung positionally perfect ka na, practically okay ka na. Kaya kung nataw natin, kung Christian ka, yes, positionally you are perfect because you have the righteousness of Jesus, pero kung nataw natin, practically ay abaw ang mga qualities na ginambas ang Bible, hindi makita kasi kung wala ka self-control, wala ka patience, wala ka steadfastness, wala ka love. So ano yung mo? Gusto ni Pedro mag-grow ka na? 
mag-grow ka sa sininga inward qualities. So that's why hindi niya imposible because the, 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 the Apostle Peter said in, chapter, in verse 3 and 4, sila yun know, o bao, ginprobaydan ka mo ni Jesus sang the home kang sa promises. So it is centered in the person of Jesus. It is controlled by the power and the promises of Jesus in verse 3 and 4. But sila yun, ang mga godly qualities yung inambal din ni Apostle Pedro in verse number 5 to 7, hindi yung mga qualities yung mga kuturan, no? ang faith, tapos ang goodness, tapos ang knowledge, tapos ang, ang self-control, self-control, uh, steadfastness, brotherly affection, tapos love. Hindi pa lang hindi posible because He gave us power. He gave us His promises so that we, we will be Christ-like. We will be Christ-like. You can be a patient mother. You can be a patient father. You can be a Christ-like son and daughter to your family. So mga utod, Sa verse 8 and 11, ginambal man na ni Pedro, no? kung ano ang, ang incentive kung kita nagatubo, you will be effective, you will be fruitful. Pero kung ikaw wala nagagrow, hindi ka gito maging effective, hindi ka gito maging productive, hindi ka blessing. Nagtanong man itong tanong, ano na kabulan, pero may tatlo na muna, or 8 months na ay, wala ang nagdala sa enjoyment. Ay, hindi ka siling ka. Pastor, tigulang mo yan. Kinanglan ko po yung magtuli. Mga utod, until the end of time, dapat mag-grow kita. Mag-grow kita sa pagkilala kay Jesus. Don't say na tigulang ka na, wala ka na sa itubo. You still have. Now, I, 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 I was really surprised because May mga adult members kita mag-add ko sa akin po ba? Pastor, gagad na ay hindi na pwede pasensya mo. So, so manay, but sila yun, you really need to grow in that area of your life. Might imagine 80 plus years old and still they need grace to grow in patience. Did you see that? So but sila yun mo uturan, hubing ka man ng tigulang ka naman o lapit ka na lang, mungtod, we still have need to grow. Kagamunin pinakamit ko sa ambas, marusal mo ka namin na tawag, nabis ka gula ka na, nagpamunga ka pa dyan. Ano lang lang? Ano lang lang nga, hindi ko malipatan si Nanay Milindin. Gula nga, pero iya lang ka, nga tanong, nga gula naman. Well, di ka tamis. Sumaray ko na sir, magunduman kita yung abukado. Well, di ka pinit. Ano nga yan? Gagulang, gatamis. Hindi kay gagulang galas ay kay gapalayok sa Diyos. Amen? So mga kuturan, the Apostle Peter wants us to grow towards Christ-likeness. And it is not impossible because Jesus has given all we need for spiritual life now and in the future. And because of this, He gave us the big command. Make every effort to grow. So mo sila yung bawa, I need to try my best so that I will be godly. So mga upod, don't expect that you will be godly, you will be Christ-like, kung hindi ka mag-exert effort. You need to exert effort. Isa ka buglay, nung mga upod, hindi ko aga, pinakitawas, hindi ka buglay, nakagod sa church. May pag mo online lang. Mayroon online sa ibang, hindi ka makakadpo. Pero for you, nga able na, I encourage you to make every effort to come to church. Listen to the word of God and grow in His word. Mga utod, ini hindi imposible. Ini hindi imposible. So don't say nga hindi ka na magtubo. Kaysa grasya sa Diyos, ang iya intention nga magatubo ka hasta sa katapusan sa iyo mga buhi. You will display the godly qualities nga ginahambal sa iyo. Isa may mga misconception kita, no? About, about growth. Kaya din natin ito, kaya nasa sa church, mature na sa no? Maturity cannot be measured by calendar. Kisa matingan, dapat yung bayan na sa church, yung bata-bata, jato na. Because hindi mo sila yung mga dugay na sa church, mature na sa dayon. Ang maturity ay talaksan ng tulad Christ-likeness. The internal quality sa ginambal sa Bible. Spiritual maturity is nothing to do also with activities and knowledge. Kisabi na, kung mo kaalam siya sa Bible, Boy na lang ang tao na. Boy pa na siya na gitaran na sa. Tapos ang pulunin na iba. Araw siya ako. Mature na sa. 
No good. It's not about activities. It's not about the presence all the time. You are automatically mature. That's not the measurement. A measurement in the man blessing. Bow in a tao. So what no mature sa? Yeah, people put a man using just yeah. That's a walk of that. The investors are more off. I have so much money. I have a wonderful house. I have a nice car. Secure job. See how how God has blessed me because I have honored Him. Mga kutumal po, hindi nga gin bless ka sa gin mo, gin alaw niya i bless ka, but that is not a mark of spiritual maturity. Listen, the maturity of any ministry can be measured only by the Christ-likeness of its members. Christ-likeness na tulaksan mga kutumal, ang inward quality. It's not about what you are doing! It's about who you are. It's about your being. Amun ang mamuturan niya ang basang Biblia. And when you look at the end of this book, the Apostle Peter wants us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants us to grow in our intimacy with Christ. He wants us to know Christ deeply. Magtubo kita sa pag-intindi kay Jesus. Magtubo kita sa pagkilala kay Jesus so that we will know and we will learn how to live for Him. From beginning to end, Christian life is all about Jesus Christ. It's all about knowing Him. Iba sa atong di adjust, no? To some of us, di adjust, but kapag ay tesi in your relationship, wala ka mo na, love na together ka mo. Even though mag-asawa ka mo, you know, much of your time are so work, you Tapos mo, the night mo, and in the long period, the time of the night mo, and then, gakibot ka mo, and may conflict mo, hindi ka pang higay ka mo. Kaya nga, wala ka muna alad, na all the time of the night mo. And I learned that, na experience yan, na put kami ni Ice, pila pa kami ka, days of the night, we are together, and then, we need to learn how to live with each other. We need to learn. I want to know ano ang nagpalipay siya. Kinala niya ni Pablo, ano ang nagpalipay sa akin para makalib ka niya with peace with one more. Mga Quran, same thing mo na kay Jesus. We should learn about Him so that we can know how to live for Him. Why did the Apostle Peter is so passionate and so serious about this? Because when you look at the passage, Makita na ako, mauturan, may great danger. Let's look at the second part. The second part, not only that we will grow towards Christ-like maturity, the Apostle Peter wants us to, to be firmly rooted in the certainty in scriptures, doon sa may tingap ka, ano ang sentence, so that we will not be deceived by the false teachers. No? To, to guard us against the deception of the false teachers. Para hindi ka matiklar, dapat na hindi mo sa ito ng scripture. Now look at chapter 1, verse 12 to 21. Now look at your Bible. Nagkawa nito na ang uturan ng balita. Ano ang balita ng uturan? For we did not follow cleverly devised means when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, listen to me. The Apostle Peter is very serious about the growth because of this big problem. What is this big problem? The big problem is this. May mga manugpatalang. May mga false teachers who will rise among you. Ayan, wala pa man sila subong, but they will rise among you. Pero kung mag-rise na sila among you, amun ni ila mga karakteristics. So si Pedro, ginambal niyo ang lagi, nga ang mga kustuhan, ang dapat maging rooted ka mo sa scriptures. Kansi niya, ang akong testimony, ay an apostle. And our testimony is not mythical. Hindi niya katang isip. Kundi amon testimony is factual. Tuod-tuod gini niya. Our testimony about the coming and the, about the power and the coming of Jesus, this is factual. When we say the power of Jesus in the passage, it has to do with the first coming of Jesus. Kung paano na din demonstrate ang power niya. And in the coming, it refers to the second coming of Jesus. Ang mga post-teachers, they will attack the gospel. They will attack the second coming of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to be for no. Jesus will come again. And listen to me. Our testimony is factual. 
We saw him in the Mount of Transfiguration. We saw his glory and we heard the declaration of the Father. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. It was the Father who interpreted to Peter. Ang amay mismo nagambal. Kaya sila ni Pedro, we have a sure word. We have a, ang mayayari sa, sa dalong dramaturan, pamahati ka mo, pay attention ka mo. Verse 19, for we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed. So ang kabuhay sa nagkasuanan, dapat mapasad sa Biblia, sa mga apostles, hindi na sa mga apostles, but also to the prophets, which is to the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, gin predict ang pagkagto ni Jesus. Gin prophesy ang first coming ni Jesus. Gin patod, gin tagna ang pagkagto ni Jesus. Kagsubong ang balipidro na confirm din nga si Kristo, siya gining Kristo. He is the long mis- awaited Messiah who will establish the kingdom of God. He is the Son of God. Listen to us. We have the sure word. Kaya nga mo na pulong, hindi din nagaling. Kaya kung si Doon lang ay ako nimbensyo naman. Our word, our testimony is factual because these words come from God. No, magbasa ako, verse 21, For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. But on, they were controlled by the Spirit. Ang pag-record na sa Old Testament, and even Peter, ang pag-record niya is controlled by the Spirit. Dito ito yan sila. We can trust the apostolic testimony. We can trust the Old Testament scriptures. And if you want to know Christ deeply, hindi pwede ang basahan mo, New Testament lang. Kundi pati Old Testament basahan mo. We praise God. Higan natapos natin na yung Exodus sa piyak sa kabudlayan. We finish Exodus and we praise God that God will dwell with His people in the midst of His people. And when you read Second Peter, He will tell us the same thing. He will come, Jesus will come, and He will bring us to the new heavens and the new earth. But listen to me. Paul's teachers will tell us, no, that is myth. Hindi na tuod. There will be no second coming. Look at chapter 2, 1 to 22. Okay. As you read this way, I encourage you, read that and you will see. Pero basa ko lang ang verse, chapter 2, 1 to, 1 to 3. Ang bagra mga turan, false prophets also arose among the people, referring to the Old Testament. Just as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly, secretly, secretly bring destructive heresies. Madalas na sa mga pangtulunan ay hindi amo. Pangtulunan na magadalas ang destruction kagsang halit sa sunod sa simbahan. Siling grano, pero hapos na yung identify. Why? Because even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction, and many will follow their sensuality, and because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. Now, I will not go into details of this, but I will, I will give you big pictures of this, of this lengthy chapter. The point is this. False teachers will rise among you, and listen, they will deny the Lordship of Jesus Christ. They will deny the Lordship of Jesus Christ. They will promote a certain kind of lifestyle na kung sa diin, magadala sa inyo sa kasalanan, lifestyle na paggustuhan, ay. They deny the sovereignty of Christ. They deny the power of Christ. They deny the Lordship of Christ. They live as if sila ang master, sila ang kabuhin. Kagamuna ang pinakadelikado ng tuloy na pagtulong. And listen to me. Ang muna dahil natudlo sa mga elders to visit church. Nga pagustuhan, ay lang tadi yan. Basta, taglang mo, feeling nyo, greet you sa bangko ko. And these false teachers are very greedy. They're all thinking of themselves. Ay lang kami sa money and, and sex and self and pleasures of this world. Ang muna ay lang kami sa labang uturan. They will deceive us. They, they look like us. Don't like the life spring man. Go magiyo to si pastor man. Pero manupata lang nila. Like, Mga kuturan, ayan, wala pa na, naga, wala pa na sa subong sa ato nga, but let us be, beware, because it will come. It will come. Una, yagin niya i-attack sa ato ang authority sa scripture. Papalayo, kung niya ta sa Bible, 
That's the first indication. May kagaisibong na mga group, there is a danger of unscriptural spirituality. Doon ka spiritual sila, pero problema mo ni, ay na spirituality is unscriptural. Nung lupagwa nila sa banyo, grabe yung impressions ng spirit. Nga, ang leader na lang may ipakita ang Diyos ako, tapos magutusan ang ipakita, yan wala man, wala man ang pasal sa Biblia. Mga kuturan, that is a very dangerous step. It will, it will lead us to drift away from the authority of Scripture. Wala na si Guru. Ang siguro, ano yan, ang gimpahayag na sa Diyos sa aton. Mga kuturan, we don't need testimony sa people na nagkagko sa impirno para magbilig kita na ng impirno because the Bible said it already. We don't need people who will say, may langit, hindi ka blok, kung naglagaw, kung nabigyan na blok. So listen to my testimony, may langit, hindi ka blok. Or listen to my testimony, may impirmo ganyan kay pagkatuto sa langit po, si Dr. Jackson nagambansa ko, hindi, ang iyong pakanta, ang akong kanta. Kaya kung hindi na kanta, nagaan to, si Dr. Jackson. No! When you read the scripture, the scripture is clear, he revealed to us, verse 7 and a half, there is coming judgment. So we don't need to drift away from the testimony of the scripture because the scripture already revealed it. Ginambal sa Bible, pati yan tayo ginambal sa Bible, hindi ginambal sa tao. The word of God is sufficient. Be careful. Kahit na kita pirmi, atake yun sa nyawa. Or atake yun sa false teachers. Kwa ako niyang authority sa Bible, kag ibutang niya ka sa posisyon na pwede ka kahimuhimo, istorya. Kag pwede ka ka, ka-expressin mo balat siya, gano'n nga mo na impression ni Lord. Ang muna nakita ko, okay, na muna yung gusto ni Lord, din na niyong magiging pa, basta, kanaka lang siya sa feeling. No! Go back to the Word, be rooted in the Word of God, so that you will not be deceived by the false teachers. Listen to me! Ang una, din na i-attack nila ang scripture, papalayuan ka nila sa scripture. So pay attention to the preaching of the Word, pay attention to the sure Word of God, read it, study it, so that in this dark world, We will bring light to our generation. That's what the Bible says. And by the way, Apostle Pedro, we have a sure word. The Apostle Pedro, pay attention to God. As a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Time will come. Our illumination will be complete. And we will enjoy that illumination in glory. Pero samtang wala pa na nagabot si Jesus. Let us seek Him in the Scripture. Hindi tamang tinamad sa bugay ng kaluwis ng Diyos. If you want to grow, you cannot grow towards Christ-likeness without the Word of God. So, when you look at the end of chapter 2, you will see na ito hanggang end din sa chapter 2. I-expound ko na sa prabuto na in detail. Pero lang ito, ano yung lang sa chapter 2, verse 22, what the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit and the, and the soul, after washing herself, return to wallow in the mind. So, grabe, no? Ang muna mga kung teachers, kung lang tawon mo, may dagway man sila sa Kristuanon, pero, kung lang tawon mo, gin-overcome sila sa sala, kag kung lang tawon mo, gabalik sila sa ilang akdaan ng gawit, gin-kawan sa idong sukaya, ang baboy yung paliguan, kung nagbalik naman liwat sa turuban, wala transformation. Pero kung may transformation ka, Christ-likeness, mag, 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 maging characterized sa iyong mga kabuhin. Opposite, right? Ang mga false teachers, wala Christ-likeness, wala godliness, pero kung lang tawon mo, ang desire ni Apostle Pedro sa katawan niya, na maging Christ-like siya. Maging Christ-like siya. Let's look at chapter 3. So I pray that this, this week, for better engagement in the Word of God, you will read 2 Peter over and over again so that you can benefit in this sermon series. Look at chapter 3. Don't look at me. Ah, tulog ko mo dyan. Punta ko na. Look at chapter 3. Look at verse 1 and 2. Reminder, ha? Mga utot, ang second Peter, book of reminder. So, madami ko ito reminder sa sinyangan. Look at verse, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. This is now the second letter that I am writing to you. Beloved, in both of them, I am steering you up by sincere mind, by way of reminder that you should remember the prediction of the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and the save and Savior through your apostles. Now, let's talk about it. When we talk about it in chapter 3, somehow it's a recap. Don't be sulit. I'm going to discuss it. Brian, 
There is a danger of knowledge without practice. Kahit kung napunan ang utok mo sa knowledge tapos wala ka man practice, what's the point? Wala kang grow kung wala application. Gagrow ka kung may application. Right? So, gusto ni Pedro that we should put it into practice. So, the Apostle Peter highlight the practical things that we should do if we want to be faithful as we wait for the coming of Christ. So, grow towards Christ's life, maturity, that is rooted in the authority of the Scripture, rooted in the certainty of the Scripture, to guard us against the deception of the false teachers while waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So, sometime ago, not kita kay Jesus Christ, anong imuunta? That's chapter 3. Ano yung muunta? So, ginambalan kita na ni Una, get remember. O, okay, isulit sa naman ang remember. Kung ang taon na ito ng word remember, sa so chapter 1, makita naman na. Sa so chapter 3, ang banyan no? you should remember the prediction. Now, ano na sa prediction? Again, it's connected to the second coming of Jesus. Remember the prediction. Again, predict sa mga prophets ang pagkagto ni Jesus, referring to the first coming. And through his apostles, Ginpahayag man ni Jesus ang iya second coming. And what's the commandment of Jesus? Well, the commandment of Jesus is anchored in the gospel. And of course, if you love Jesus, you will long for His coming. You will long for His coming. Ang anticipation mo ang pagbalik ni Jesus because He is your Lord, He is your Savior. Unlike sa mga false teachers, they deny Jesus. Wala second coming. Storya na na. Pero sa aton, hindi na storya. It is true. That's why I'm going to say, I'm going to Jesus. I'm predict sa mga po, I'm predict sa mga prophets. I'm going to say, I'm going to mga apostles. He will come. Tapos ang balya, hindi lang dumdumon nyo, kundi inchindiyon nyo man. Natawa nyo sa verse 3. Inchindiyon nyo. Knowing this first of all, nga may mga manupatalanggit, well, di kasagad sa agad sila mong ito. Okay, verse 3 na. Tapos pagka verse 4, ang balila, they will say, where is the promise of His coming? For ever since the Father fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. That's why you verse 5, and they deliberately overlook this fact. Ano nila overlook nila? Now, expound ka na next Sunday, but let me summarize. Again, overlook nila ang first judgment sa Hino. Dumduman yung sinuwa. Sa time ni Noah, again, judge sa Hino ang kalibutan with water, Right? He judged the world with water again, wipe out siyang kalimutan, kaging preserve niya sinuwa kayo yung family, ka nag-built it was a new generation. Ang muna natabo, sigurado kita nga natabo in the past. That's why we quote naman sa chapter 2, all certainty of judgment sa Sodom and Gomorrah, sa angels, gin quote naman kay Noah. Mga kuturan, judgment will certainly come. Ang muna sa punto nila ni, ni Pedro. Judgment will, will, will certainly come. But these false teachers, they deny it. No, there's, there will be no judgment. There will be no second coming. From Bali Pedro, no? Sa una water, but in the future, it will be fire. It will be fire. God will certainly judge the world. Kag na tawa niyo mga uturan. I want us to look at verse Verse 7. But the same word, the heavens and the earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. So, ano gina challenge? Ano challenge sa mga false teachers? Gina attack ni ng second coming. They don't believe in the second coming. Kag kabalo ko mga utod. Dapat dumdumo natin nga mabalik si Jesus kag inchindiyo natin nga ang ataki yun sa nyawa amun isa ang second coming they will deny the second coming they will and if you deny the second coming you are attacking the heart of the gospel try to imagine si Jesus si Jesus nagkadto din sa kalibutan gin-establish gin, gin ang kingdom tapos yung establish ang kingdom ang bala ng March of 1 verse 15, verse 15. The kingdom of God is at hand. Sila nga lang? Ano lang kingdom? Sige nga, ginadala ko na. Repent and believe the gospel. He established the kingdom. And then, the Bible says, He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Tapos, napatay siya, nabanhaw siya for 40 days. He rose again from the dead. He is now sitting at the right hand of the majesty in life. What a wonderful news! Pero kung nabula na, oh my goodness. There will be no hope for us. Yes, he is alive. Pero hindi sa magbalik. What is there for us? Ano hope na for the future? There will be no hope if he will not come back. All our singings, all our worship gatherings 
will be nonsense because in the end, no one will come back. He will not come back. Pero mga kuturan, the truth is, He will come back. Living in love me. Dying He saved me. Be ready to carry my sins far away. Living in justified freely forever. One day is coming. Oh, glorious day. Imagine, nandiyo na mga kuturan. Kung wala si Kang Kaming, there will be no glorious day. There will be no hope for you when you suffer sa, sa physical sickness mo. There will be no hope for us. But the Bible says, He will surely come. He will surely come. And the Apostle Peter will challenge us. Kung mabalik, kag, mga kuturan, tuod ka mabalik si Christ. This is a sure word. He will come. Now, I'll challenge us at verse 11. I'm challenging us at since all of these things are thus to be dissolved, and what sort of people ought you to be? So, kay mabalik ko, kay mabalik si Kristo liwat, dapat ano yung kabuhi? The Apostle Peter is calling us to live a holy and godly life. So, I will pursue godliness. Hindi ko magtinamaran, kundi I will make every effort to be godly, waiting and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which... The heavens will be set on fire and dissolved. The heavenly bodies will melt and they burn. But according to this promise, according to His promise, we're waiting for the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. Wow! Amun yung ginahunan tato ng promise of Diyos na mag-abot. Ngayon sa diin, we will be with Him in the new heavens and new earth. Ngayon sa diin, ang righteousness na gagawin. We will be in our home of righteousness because God, our God is righteous. We will be there because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Nang ginahatag sa ito, hindi tungkol sa performance na because we are Christ-like. Gain secure na ni Jesus, but it will affect us the way we live now. And that is a great challenge for all of us. We believe in the first coming. We believe that Jesus Christ died in our sins. He rose again from the dead. But we live as if He will not come back. Kaya nga, doon ka pag gusto na lang ta sa atong Christian man. May man ta makasimba, may man hindi. Tapos si Tanay yung mapili niya. Maroon lang ko yan. Malaga ko yan. Nay, upon din ka makad ko. Si Kristo mabalik ni Juan. And he said he will return as a thief. Are you listening to me? He will return unexpectedly. Isang gawla ka ako, may wife sa akin yung magbalik. May schedule na, may schedule na, tapos ako, hey, wala naman. Eh, may, saan mo nga date? Tapos, wala naman nga. Ayawan na sa lahat, panindol na sa malay, everything is clean, tapos wala naman nga. Naka-discourage siya sa akin lahat. Ano siya, ayun ako sa bakulod na galalain, naging sa lahat, gadugay, gadugay, galapit, galapit, gadugay, gadugay. Mga kapuray, Jesus will surely come unexpectedly. And I surprised my wife. Why? 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 Wala na ka deteriorate, hindi nag-progress sa Christian life. Kamusta ka? Ari, mga Japan. Kamu lang na? Kamusta ka, Ari, nag-progress sa Christian life? Wow, that's good, that's great. Oh, kamusta ka na? Well, kita na yung Ari, nag-progress sa Christian life. Aral ako sa buong sa Gospel of Mark. Wala, aral ako sa buong sa, sa Gospel of John in my Bible reading. Wow, that's, that's wonderful. Mga Todd, He will surely come. And listen to me. Your business will be dissolved. Your cars will be dissolved. Your habits, you will leave your all your habits. Everything in this world will be dissolved. Your business, your treasures will be dissolved. Kaga mabigat ng mga otoran ang gipubra sa Jose mo kapuwi. Tugyan tawo niyo ba sa passage? He will come back. Kung nga, nga kadugay, kailan magbalik ako. Grabe nga ba sa passage, no? 
the Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, but as a son counts slowness, but is patient toward you, not but is patient toward you, not willing, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Tapos ang balipa sa verse 8, But do not overlook this fact, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. No, Pastor, do ka dahil? Ano saan sa buti na yun? Well, buti na yun mga utod, that Jesus is in control. Wala saya, hindi siya kontrolado. Sometimes ang tao is not tied by human time, human experience. You cannot put God in a box. Mga utod, and He will surely come. Pero kung nga, ah, Wala pa sa subong. It is because he is merciful. It is because he is patient. He wants us to repent. Kita niyo hearts and ginoo. Kakita niyo hearts and ginoo that he is very patient. He is not willing that any that any of you will perish. He is talking about to the church. Sino ni siya? They like exiles. He is not willing that his people will perish. But all of them will come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't know who are the elect. But the Lord is encouraging us. Kung tuod niya mabalik sa end, there will be coming judgment. Mm, there will be coming judgment. Matukpa ang kasingkal sa Diyos and everything in this world will be set on fire. Everything will be dissolved. Pero grabe no, if you are in Christ, you will be delivered. You will be delivered from the new heavens and new earth. Mauturan, this is a great reminder for us, encouragement for us. If this is true, if there will be coming judgment, I have friends, I have families who are not going to Jesus. I want to tell them about Him. Kita na mga ito. And maybe you're here, kagisinin mo ba, Pastor Dugay, na ko nagpunol. Tuo Dugay na ko sa church, 35 years old na ko sa church. 30 years old ako sa church, but I lived the scripture many years ago. Why na ako kabasa Bible? Di lang sa church kabasa Bible. Pag sa balay, wala na gitya, Pastor. Mga kauturan, look at the heart of God. He's very patient. He's calling you to repent. I want you to grow. I want you to display my the qualities of my son because this is my project. My project is to restore my image to you through the person of my son, Jesus Christ. That is the great project of God. Are you willing to join this project? He is restoring his image to us. He is restoring his image to the church. Are you willing to join this project? Are you willing to pursue this project? Boko bay patani, hindi ka naman balibad. Hey, kabut lai, hey, hindi naman balibad. This is what the Bible says. Ang muling gusto niya matapusin mo. Gusto niya magpagoon ka. Gusto niya maggrow ka sa grace sa pagkilala mo kay Jesus. So that grace and peace will be multiplied to you. That no matter what is happening in the world, this world, puno sa gadlo, puno sa gadlo, He wants to use you. That your life will be a light in this dark world because you're rooted in the Word of God. He is calling us to continue in holiness and godliness. He is calling us to grow, to keep growing in knowing Jesus. Look at the last verse. Verse 3. Chapter 3, verse 18. Huh? Ang balita ang But therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are carried away by the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. But grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen and amen. So my dear, my dear church, gusto sa Diyos that we will keep on growing. Amen? Hindi maguntat, hindi magpatayong tubo. Are you actively responding to this call? Or are you resisting actively? So, may patani, hindi ka mag-resist, kundi you will make him kung ano ginambal sa scripture sa atin. Mga kuturan, the message is clear. Grow, the growing towards Christ-like maturity that is rooted in the certainty of the scriptures 
to guard us against the deception of false teachers while waiting for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the big message of this book. Wala tapat na tako lang details ng book. Please, this week, read Second Peter. If you want to grow, read Second Peter. Read, read Second Peter every day. Be familiarized with it. And let me tell you, you will be disturbed. But you will also be comforted by the Word of God. Let me end by, the, by saying this big application sa ato ni Simbahan. It is my prayer that all of us will pursue no? I pursue na ton pursue in growing towards Christ-like maturity in Christ. Study firmly, study and be firmly rooted in the scriptures because paagi sine, it will protect us from the destructive heresies and also will prevent us from drifting away from the faith and from the faithful Christian teachers until Christ returns. If we have a community growing and living in the Word of God, we will have a stable and strong community. It will ensure the, the, the health and the life of our church for the sake of His glory. So, mga utod, wow, basi na yan, panay mo kayo, hindi ka lang mag-grow without the Word of God. Huh? Hindi ka mag-grow without the Word of God. May movement at isipong sa church, Life Spring Project, we are studying the Gospel of Mark. Some of you, wala ko na napalo up, no? Pero kabay pa tani, you will consider going back again. Hindi lang nga for the same, makabasa, okay, nakabasa na ko, that's it. No, you want to understand. Kaya ka disarget, I won't understand your word, Lord, help me. Doon pa ang may isang buyog. Ngayon, hindi sa mag-buya, mintras na ito, hindi niya magpo ang tamay isang bulak. Kabay pa tani, mong na-attitude na, Lord, I will not leave this morning without tasting your goodness. Say more word, Lord. May mga difficult passages that go, Abu Dhabi, Lord, but Lord, I will stay. I will stay. I want to know you. I want to grow. Even in these difficult times, I want to grow. Let me end with this quote by Rabbi Zachariah. Sinigyan na, Beginning well is momentary thing. Finishing well is a lifelong thing. Beginning well is a momentary thing. Finishing well is a lifelong thing. Basiyari, kasi sinin nga, gano'n ba sinin ka? Pastor, gulang ako. Ay, pastor ako bata pa ka. When you read Second Peter, you will be encouraged. Gingaan ka sa ginoo, gahom. Para may kilala mo si Jesus. So don't make any excuses. May harap na members sa silay. Hindi ka makita. Pero gina pang abaye ako. Kung saan yung Bible sa ako, ang discipleship is lang dawa. Why ka ba lang yung ako? Nung nag-discuss is lang dawa. Basabi sa akong mark may basabi. Hindi sa kakita ko. So ang mataya yung ako. One, 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 one time, I also saw my, kita ko man ako ni Nablus, nung inabasa niya si Papa Bible. Yung mga sa mga, ah, nagpapabasa ang Bible ako. Hey, nakakita, I really miss the word of God. Samtang may mata ka pa, basa. Nanayofelia, bumol, di naman yung bati. But every time, nga makabati sa klaro sa mensahe. Pasto ka ginabla, wala ginagamon. Kano'y klaro ginang mensahe? Hindi yung liyaw, huwag salamat ni Pasto. Samtang makabati ka pa, pamati. Samtang makakadto ka pa sa church, kadto. Si Biberley sa Silay, Bow, no, baka nga tayo nagkadto sa church. Kung ikaw ito ko lang, balam siya, may yung dagdan, may mga kadto ka pa sa church, kung bago ito tayo mo, ikaw pa kalimu, eh. Pero paano mo pong ganang tao nga na-bless the Word of God? Paano mo pong ganang tao nga nag-resa, I want to listen to the Word of God? Abi ko pa, so I cannot hear God's Word anymore. But the Lord bless me and I'm recovering. I want to listen to the Word. So don't say or don't make any excuses. You can be fruitful. We can be productive in these difficult times. We have sufficient resources. Top on it. Let's pray. Lord, please, Lord, by your grace and mercy, 
help us. Nga magtubo kami Lord bisang good life ang sitwasyon gino. Amo ni Lord ang pinakabud life bong because we are we are dam of restrictions. Ang amo mga kabataan gusto magkato pero gusto magkato. May mga adults so gusto magkato gusto magkato. May ara Lord nga puwit nga. May ara Lord nga may capacity magkato pero wala gana magkato. May ara Lord nga nalipat na. May ara Lord nga doon nagpagusto na. Nalipatan nila gino. Nalipatawa nila sila. May ara Lord nga wala na nagasubmit sa Lordship ni Christ. May ara Lord nga ginadenay na ang second coming ni Jesus as if ang pleasure sa sinya kalibutan kaya ang kabuis niya present life abin nila abunan ni Lord we thank you that we have glorious hope in Christ there will be new heavens and new earth once at the end of righteousness the good one Lord thank you thank you thank you Lord nga kung magabuti man ang judgment we will be delivered and we will be safely home in your presence. Thank you for Jesus. Maybe you're here today, you're not a Christian. Ayan na kasi ka man, I want to grow. Abyan, hindi ka gigmang tubo kung wala si Jesus. Kagto ka na kay Jesus, Jesus is your life. Come to Him. Believe in Him. He is the Savior of the world. He will judge the world in the future. Kabay patani, you will listen to the word of God. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and then righteous man is taught and let them return and receive mercy. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We long for the coming of our King Jesus. Oh, come, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Amen.